what are the key initiatives how the government is seeing it and how they want to develop a sustainable yet competitive uh, ecosystem and what is the policy is going to be in the lithium ion cell manufacturing which i think is probably one of the drawback we have when we consider the india market so these are the two key questions you can just throw a lot of light on that and thanks a lot you have come out with a great fame to policy and i think a lot of people are talking about very encouragingly about it one thing which we forget is that india has to be looked in a different way when it comes to the automobile uh, scenario we uh, we have the shortest trip size in india we have uh, uh, the highest number of non mechanized travel means still in the country and uh, we manufacture more than 80% of the two wheeler three wheeler in the overall automobile mix of the country uh, in that scenario we have to look at the india in a in a different uh, way and then as rajiv has also appreciated the indian government had rightly focused its attention to the two wheeler three wheeler and the public transport for the simple reason that the direct uh, fiscal incentives that to the extent which is uh, expected in a country and the size of the country it's very difficult for the government to come out and same is the situation uh, which is there in the cell manufacturing which we are trying to promote with the direct uh, fiscal incentive the link with the total uh, production or the manufacturing and then again the figures are uh, huge because we expect to be uh, needing about 2.5 k gigawatt hour of the batteries by 2032 or 2030 post 2030 so in that kind of a scenario whenever we think about any fiscal incentive it becomes difficult to think about but what the indian government has done in terms of the non fiscal in- incentive is comparable or parallel to any other country uh, be it the scandinavian countries or china or uh, Uh, you have just accept that ki we have not yet provided the direct capital uh, subsidies or the capital investment for the electric vehicle sector this the china being a different kind of a country it is possible for them but not for a federal structure and a democratic country like india so in the non fiscal incentive we have taken uh, a lot of uh, steps to boost your road transport and highways uh, road tax uh, the permits uh, the Uh, the the ministry of power uh, capping the power tariffs and the like ones so not uh, elaborating on that but 2025 major policy announcements have been made post uh, uh, move summit and uh, that involved uh, the decisions from the five six major government ministries department and the 15 state governments have come out with their electric vehicle policies and that also shows the way uh, things are uh, uh, moving forward in the country now what uh, could be the government's uh, uh, policies or uh, uh, what could be the role of the government what i think is that looking at the global uh, decisions or the global uh, uh, things are moving probably we may have the a dynamic uh, duty kind of a structure where we should we have to learn lot from the what is happening globally we have to be selective in uh, providing the direct fiscal incentives uh, the china for example has a very rightly stopped uh, incentivizing the low low density or the low speed uh, even the two wheelers so and uh, they were planning to stop uh, direct fiscal incentives to the four wheeler passenger vehicle by 2020 but uh, um because of the covid they have extended it now for that so that is what uh, is uh, there with the indian government uh, should be uh, thinking about and they would be uh, uh, taking decision in this uh, regard now uh, industry what the industry should be looking forward i i must say that industry has to be on the same uh, platform uh, the two wheeler three wheeler component manufacturers and uh, the startups and uh, the established players they have to look at the uh, their priorities and they have to be on the same platform and look at the government policies and incentives which are there and then come up with their suggestions whenever we have the stakeholders consultation we find that uh, uh, some kind of a uh, difference of opinions or rather uh, stands are different whether when it comes to the startups and when it comes to the established players in the oem category so uh, this is something which the industry uh, should be uh, working on they should come forward and uh, the, that may take the best uh, uh, benefits of the of the government policies 
Now, as far as the skill development is concerned, uh, uh, Rajiv was also mentioning about it. IIT Guwahati and IIT Delhi have started their master's program in electric vehicles. In fact, uh, tomorrow itself, we are, I mean, I'm going to address the first batch of students in the master's program in IIT Guwahati on electric mobility. So, could, we could, this couldn't have been imagined unless we just uh, moved very swiftly. And similarly, with the Ministry of Skill Development also, the skills required at the at the lower end or rather that uh, the slightly lower end and the master's program or MTech program are going to be imparted in various institutions and various uh, uh, training uh, places uh, where uh, uh, the skill development is also taking place. So in that, uh, with that perspective, uh, uh, the expectations of the OEMs uh, is the last thing which probably you wanted to uh, ask me. Uh, the, TCO of two-wheeler and three-wheeler is already in the favor of the electric vehicle. And a very critical decision has been taken to have a vehicle without a battery, to register a vehicle uh, without a battery, which is the landmark uh, decision to my to our assessment in the Niti IO. And that puts the capex on uh, on, uh, on an electric vehicle lower than the internal combustion uh, vehicle. So with that, uh, the capex lower than that, the total cost of ownership in a four-wheeler passenger vehicle is also now could be imagined. Yes, uh, it's correct that uh, the India is a price-sensitive uh, market and probably the consumer is looking forward to less than 10 lakhs kind of a thing or maybe 5-6 lakhs kind of a uh, for a for a TV. But I can't I can't imagine if Indian manufacturers instead of looking at uh, uh, for the technology, because this technology is no rocket science, it's a decades old technology of the electric vehicle. Uh, anybody who is trying to manufacture it anywhere in the world has the technology barring the cell chemistry. Now with that uh, technology, I don't know, I mean I can't understand why the prices should not come down given the size and the scale of even the Indian market. And once you start manufacturing for the Indian market, why can't you be uh, in a leadership position for the global markets if you are able to be competitive in the Indian uh, sector. So the prices of the electric vehicle, motor, the, the powertrain and uh, the battery management systems and other things, club all together, the cost certainly should go down. Yes, of course, I mean, we have some data from the bill of material and uh, we, uh, in, under discussion with the, some of the manufacturers in the two-wheeler, three-wheeler segment certainly, but also in the four-wheeler uh, uh, segment and that is the reason why uh, the Tata uh, Nexon EV is doing extremely well and I, I look forward to uh, 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 robust growth for that. And I must say that whatever may be the projection, the 10% uh, uh, anticipation which is there being said, I mean, I think uh, the figures are going to be much, much uh, different from that. Even the battery prices predicted by, uh, predicted by the Bloomberg or the Morgan Stanley, uh, the, the battery prices are much lower than what uh, uh, Bloomberg, uh, BNEF had uh, predicted in 2017. And that's what uh, the Stanford professor Tony Seba says that the, the, the mistake is the is the primarily done by established players and the so-called uh, uh, the experts and and the uh, and the consulting consultants who are not able to see as to what is happening. To our understanding, the adoption is going to be much higher. And uh, we have taken the right steps by prioritizing the two-wheelers, three-wheelers because their contribution to the environment the import bills of the of the fossil fuel and all these things have been taken into account. By 2030, we must be reaching around, uh, uh, if not 20% plus, but around the figure should be 20%. Yes, I'm talking of the entire automobile segment. I'm not I'm not talking about the, just the four-wheeler passenger uh, vehicle because the, we are looking at the overall contribution of the automobile sector to the environment, to the pollution and our export uh, bills and also the local value addition. And in that uh, respect, I would say that the industry should make sure that we should not commit the same mistakes that we did in the internal combustion uh, engine industry. We are uh, taking, we are claiming uh, to be adding a lot of exports, uh, uh, a lot of value to the economy. But then again, how much is the value addition in the country? And that is where probably our face manufacturing program and the localization restrictions that we have put forward for the industry should be coming handy. Thanks a lot and this is what probably I wanted to add.